Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Has the Gibson Demo Shop gone too far? <laughs> I don't know, you guys tell me. There's a couple of interesting ones, but we're going to recap the Demo Shop from last week. Alright, so starting off on Tuesday, their first upload wasn't that crazy, but I was able to finally grab one of these SGCMs. Gibson consistently offers really nice deals on these. So if you happen to be here right when these things are listed, because they always sell within minutes, sometimes even seconds, the CM Black series is great. That was pretty much the best deal that I saw. I was on top of things that week. But they also offered two exclusive paint jobs that time. So there was this one, a Gibson Les Paul 60s tribute in a frosted Pelham. And this was listed at $1,599. Personally, I liked it, but I didn't like it $15.99 much. This is actually an older model guitar from the year 2016, so we can't really compare it to a brand new price, but I'm sure something like this was probably like $1,200 brand new back in the day. So giving it a fresh new paint job on the front, I could see how somebody would want this. It's a nice looking guitar. This didn't sell too fast. You had a couple of hours to grab it. I did end up seeing this one get relisted on Reaver, but unfortunately I've lost the link. But I just happened to find it while editing this one. He took some great photography of it. He actually sold it at a loss, but he said this finish actually had kind of a flip-flop nature to it. So maybe it was cooler than even Gibson was giving it credit for. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the one where I think Gibson took things too far. This piece right here lasted the longest on the demo shop. We're talking two or three days for an exclusive paint job. Let's take a look. Let's find out why it lasted so long. It's just this really vibrant red color. You have dual P90s with a wrap tail piece. Okay, that's pretty cool. No pick guard kind of looks interesting on this. Black speed knobs, all your regular stuff here. And then we go ahead and flip it over to the back. Okay, so they just refinished the body on this one, but left the neck alone. So something to know about this, this is one of those Les Paul tribute specials. It was produced in 2021, but these things have been going on for a while. And this appears to maybe just be a satin finish, either that or they just didn't grain fill. So it's not necessarily a high-end refinish job by any means. Looks like it had a couple of dings from the factory. But these things, brand new, you can choose between humbucker and P90 pickups. They're only a thousand bucks. So at a $500 premium just for the red finish and changed out plastics, I can see why this one lasted so long. Because honestly, you won't be able to go like to a top name brand shop and get it refinished. But you could go to somebody that's of decent quality and have just the body redone professionally by someone. But you're paying for the premium of, hey, did you ever envision a Speedway Red on this guitar? And the fact that it came from Gibson like that. So it's, it's a different market. I don't think it was worth the 1500 that it sold for, but somebody did. Then other than that, we had a couple of like Les Paul Studios, Juniors, Double Cuts. Okay prices, nothing too crazy. Guess we can take a quick look at this Les Paul Custom Shop. Pretty much all they did was add a Bigsby, take the pickup covers off. If you're looking for a brand new style custom shop, Gibson, it's right up there. Looks like, ooh, Schaller tuners. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nice. Please, Gibson, bring these things back. I love the way they look, but I hate this. Change those to keystones, and then you are in the clear. I love that old style Gibson Schaller tuner. I didn't realize that one had that. It appears it left that from the factory, too. I would love to see more of that get used, but this one just had a couple of dings on the back, some scratches, so they threw it over to the demo shop. That's the thing with the demo shop. You gotta click on some of these and look, because sometimes there's something a little special. Looks like a, a worn SG HP standard, you know, pretty decent prices, a 50 Les Paul standard cold top for 300 bucks off. Kind of a weirdly modified SG modern, but take a look at this thing. They call it a GS355. I'm wondering if that was some sort of a typo and it's meant to be an ES355. Because sometimes they change that, like for the Dave Grohl 335, the DG. But I was unsuccessful in searching GS and finding anything. But that is a slick looking guitar with the diamond sound holes on that. Basically just Les Paul custom style attributes on a 335. But now let's talk where they really took the mod job way too far, but I love it. 
So when I interviewed the guy that runs the demo shop, he said even though they're modifying guitars, they still try to keep it semi what on brand. So the guys that work at the shop, they're free to do whatever they want within reason. I am surprised they let this happen. Look at this beautiful monstrosity. So this is a Gibson SG Supra. I actually purchased a Supra earlier this year from the demo shop. It was a very cool guitar, but this one is way different. So it came stock from the factory with three pickups. That's nothing crazy. They just removed the pickup cover on that one. Kind of an interesting look because if you look at it, you know, cross-eyed, it just looks like you only have two pickups. That one just kind of disappears into the darkness. But then they threw a white pick guard on this. Okay. From the factory, it would have looked like this. No pick guard at all because, you know, you've got all this flame figuring. Why would you want a pick guard? They decided you wanted it. So they put it on there. Okay. But oh my, oh my goodness. Do you see what this is? This is a leftover Sanwa kill switch from the Buckethead series. That is the exact same shape and size. I am hopeful there's a couple of bucket heads kicking around at the demo shop. We haven't seen many 2010, 2011 guitars, but I guess it's possible. Or maybe is this a sign that the bucket head is being reissued and they just had these things sitting around in their available parts drawer. This could be big news for bucket head Les Paul lovers like me. But to make matters even crazier, uh, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, look, look over here. So they've taken that toggle switch, enlarged the route to put the kill switch in, right? Okay. But then, since they didn't have a toggle switch anymore and they wanted to leave it two volumes, two tones, they routed the guitar for a blade style switch like you find on a Stratocaster. <laughs> oh, I wonder how they wired it because that could potentially be a five-way switch now. I'm not sure if that is the case, but then you could have fancy coils splitting and different blending options with that. And if you remember correctly, straight from the factory, these things actually had a piezo system. Now that might have been removed. I haven't looked into the listing too much. And I wish I could tell you guys that I was the one that bought this, but I was, you know, right on top of this upload and I never even saw this thing. So it lasted seconds and I have not seen it show up again for resale. But on top of all of that quirkiness, they mix matched it with black and gold hardware. I haven't seen that before. It looks kind of cool. I mean, you get the black washers, the gold nut with the black tuning in the middle, then the gold tuning tips. They give it a kind of a cool white truss rod cover. Ooh, that looks really smart on the back, I would say, especially with that uh, mahogany color right there. I wonder if this guitar had like a huge ding in it or something or like a large scratch and that's why they decide hey let's, let's go ahead and go crazy because that would have took some skill to route that they probably would have had to put it on a cnc machine or do something i would imagine it probably became a demo because it had a little chip back here from the factory originally but let's go ahead and uh take a look down here okay yeah kill switch and five-way selector but they don't tell us what the five-way selector does so neck Neck middle, middle, middle bridge, bridge, potentially. I'm guessing we have a trio of 57 classics in there. So whoever bought this, I would be interesting to see how they ended up wiring that thing up to have a kill switch. That's great. Gibson Demo Shop, just add a kill switch to every guitar you sell. But in the end, this is definitely the craziest mod shop that I've personally seen. And next up in Gibson testing the waters and how high they can price these things in the demo shop was this bad boy. This was actually teased the week prior on the Gibson Instagram page. You can follow them there. They kind of stopped doing that, but then they brought it back recently. So it, it's worth a follow if you're on Instagram. And I looked at this and I was like, ooh, that's nice. Like it looks like it's got some sort of like a purple sparkle finish. They did the whole black gold thing on it again. Interestingly colored pickup rings as they've been known to do. With the gold covers, this thing's looking great. And when I refreshed the page and saw these things stocked, I was like, oh, it's still there. I can get it. $3,299 though. And for some reason I saw this custom and I thought, okay, it's a custom shop guitar. And I almost impulse bought it right on the spot. And I'm so glad I took a second to step back and think logically. What is this guitar? Because 
In order to figure out any type of premium for the kind of cool finish that they've got going on, you also need to understand what the base model can sell for. So here's our first full body shot. What is going on with that headstock? That is not the usual Flying V headstock. Normally they get a giant truss rod cover that says Gibson on them and they don't have that. So I was thinking, okay, is this like uh, some sort of a custom shop one where they did that? So then I flipped it over to the back and no, this is a Gibson USA product. It was made very recently in 2021, very early, I guess. We're over halfway through the year now, it's not that recent. But you can really uh, take a look at that cool purple sparkle finish, especially right here. It looks like it has like some silver flake in it or something. Maybe it's gold too, kind of hard to tell. So I clicked off, took a good hard look and oh, oh, Gibson Flying V Tribute. So it started life like this, just a, a natural finish, half pick guard. I guess this also could have potentially started life as like the B2 series. Wow, this one's actually really nice if you're looking for one of these brand new. Take a look at that wood figuring, that's great. It's an old model, generally sells between 1000 to about 1400 The B2 was basically just that with different pickups and an ebony finish. I believe I reviewed the B2 Explorer. And they're cool guitars, but you gotta remember, brand new, they were 17 But this, whoa, doubled in price. Like that price, I thought it was a custom shop, right? This thing sat about, I want to say 12 hours. I wasn't really, you know, watching it all day, but I was curious how long it would take to sell. I'm surprised it sold for that. I really thought it was going to, you know, sit around for a while, but this was the first time that any type of Gibson Demo Shop exclusive finishes actually sat for a while. So I think what happened is somebody probably impulse bought this thinking that, oh, they just happened to get there when it restocked and they got excited. Now, that I've got nothing against anybody that just fell in love with this finish, but kind of like that other one, you could easily buy a B2 for about a thousand bucks used. Even if you paid Gibson to do it, they normally charge about $2,500 for a refinish. It comes out to be about the same price, but then you could pick, you know, whatever color. So I thought this one was priced very high for what it was, but at the same time, it was cool. It sold, so who am I to say anything? Somebody liked it enough to pay the premium. Sometimes you have to pay the artist for the vision, because I would have never thought, let's do black and gold and purple and white and all this other stuff. But it certainly tested how much people would be willing to pay. So that pretty much encompasses what happened last week. Around Thursday, Friday, we'll do a recap of what happens this week. So far, nothing too crazy. But the next one to watch out for that was teased on their Instagram page is right here. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is like the perfect shade of green. It's like an emerald jade. All right, troglodytes. Thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you've ever bought anything from the demo shop. And we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.